Hey everyone, Hedgehog here. Welcome back to episode 2 of R Cube. That's Realism Overhaul with Real Solar System and Realistic Progression Zero. It's the last time I'm going to be saying that. I really want to thank Matterbeam and OIP from Reddit who helped me come up with the name. Okay, so last time we were flying the WOW 1 sounding rocket. And I've taken that science, warped ahead, unlocked a couple of nodes, and I'm going to be using this new technology to be launching our second rocket, the WOW 2. It's still a sounding rocket, as you can tell by the name, but this one is much, much bigger. It's built exactly the same, but it's much, much bigger. Okay, here we go. SAS is on, throttle is up, and we are going to launch in... Alright, okay. Three, two, one, launch! And stage separate. Awesome. Okay, we. Oh, we need to actually recover this thing? Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Let's just transmit and take what we can. Okay, so the WOW 2 rocket is very, very similar to the WOW 1. It's bigger, obviously, bigger engine, more fuel, it's much more powerful. I guess the two biggest changes from WOW 1 are that I actually have an SAS module on this thing. It's controllable. And also, I have added signs. I have the biological samples, which need to be recovered, but that's just not going to happen this time. We can definitely take this moment to appreciate... Earth. Look at that. Look how big it is. We're nearly 250 kilometers up and look at this map. Look at this. We're we're, we're not even going anywhere. All right, we're we're going to go up 700 kilometers and it's nothing. How crazy is that? It's like we haven't even gone anywhere. Okay, so let's just quickly warp through Apple Apps and back into the atmosphere. And we're just going to burn and crash on this thing. Oh, Geiger counter. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Okay. So apparently when you return from 700 kilometers, the reheating is a little more intense than it was before. Uh, could anything here survive? Hmm, that could be interesting. 84 meters per second. 83, here is the ground. Anything survived? Anything survived? Oh, some of, <laughs> some of these parts are still in the air. Okay, okay. Oh, here's one of our antennas. Okay, so obviously there wasn't anything interesting that actually survived crashing at just over 80 meters per second, which makes sense. And that's it for WoW 2. Super successful mission. Let's keep going. Okay, so our next mission is... High sounding rocket? Can we do Wow, that's really high. Medium sounding rocket. Okay, that's easy. I think what we need to do right now is actually just wait a bit for our new tech. Basic orbital rocketry is coming up next. Yeah, we're gonna get some serious rockets, and I think that's what's going to allow us to go to orbit. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's warp until we get that. This is early construction. What do we get? We have some more science in this. We have this. I'm not going to bother with it right now. Okay. Let's warp until we get the next science. Okay, this is our next node. Now we have all these amazing, amazing, amazing engines, and we can use them to start building something really interesting. So I want the artificial satellite, and I want, I guess I can do 
medium sounding above 110 that's not even in space okay that's easy and 1700 maybe we'll get that later alright so we're back after designing the first orbital craft the Scotsman 1 and well it's got 24 days to go so let's just go I've tested it rather simulated it a couple of times and if I'm careful it should work just fine alright let's roll out warp to complete and it's nighttime so we're gonna warp to morning it's always better to launch in the morning unless we really don't have a choice and yeah that looks sunny enough I think we can give it a go let's launch so we're good to go we've got 9500 meters per second and I think that's enough I think it's gonna be good enough for what we have and we have stability control which is nice Alright, this is actually a pretty simple rocket. It's just two, uh, well, three stages. And yeah, okay. Three, two, one, blast off. Oh, wait. Uh, heat up the engines, and then there we go. Yes. Uh, the engines need a few seconds to throttle up to 100%. Okay. Alright, so now we're just gonna go into space. We're gonna start a gravity turn and this is a great time i think to talk about this rocket it's very very simple it's three stage rocket uh, first stage is going to take us just into space um, second stage is going to give us almost all the lateral velocity that we need and the third stage you can see now is actually just a single baby sergeant solid rocket motor so it's very very basic it's not very powerful, but it's going to give us just the right kind of kick that we need to lift this very, very tiny, very Sputnik-like satellite into orbit. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to need to get nearly 8 kilometers per second. That's how fast we need to be for orbit. And this second stage is powerful enough to take us almost all the way. The solid rocket motor is going to do the rest of the work. Okay, and this stage is burnt out completely. So, let's fire up the last stage. It's got 1,800 meters per second. Let's see if it's enough to get us into orbit. Go! Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on. Come on. It's going to be so close. Yes! We did it! Woohoo! Orbit! Fantastic! And we can just stage this little thing. That's awesome! We did it! Check this out! We're in orbit. This is amazing. Wow, first try. So we got first artificial satellite. We got the uncrewed speed record, of course. Uh, notice our orbital velocity is nearly eight kilometers per second. Uh, five kilometers per second. The very easy sounding rocket. And that's it. This is our very first satellite, the Scotsman One. Awesome. Let's see if we can get some more science out of this thing. Uh, it does have a very limited uh, charge. Well, not very limited, but a limited charge. There we go. Some tropic data. We are reading some ground stations. This is from Nigeria. Okay, let's warp, see if we can get some more data. We have some more biomes coming up. Nothing yet. We're going to head over to Australia. Got connection again. 
from Australia. And desert. Great. Let's transmit this data. Still have plenty of electric charge. Oh wow, this is probably going to last a few days. All this electric charge. We got an altitude record. Let's see if we can find some more biomes. Back over to Florida. Yep. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. These are all the biomes we're going to get. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, history in the making, am I right? Let's see, lunar flyby, lunar impactor, lunar orbit. Wow, these are some pretty crazy things. Some sounding rockets. Mm -hmm. right. Around Mars? What, what do you mean? We just barely made it into orbit around Earth. You want me to get to orbit around Mars? Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay, so we're back. Um, the only thing I did since last time is, well, obviously design the next rocket, which you're going to see in a second. I also went up into the administration building and I got the unpaid research program strategy, which gives me more science at the cost of reputation. So, um, this means if you take a look at some contracts that I start getting significantly more science instead of reputation. You can't do anything with reputation anyway. So, you know, why why not? So I'm getting rid of all the reputation that I don't need anyway. And I'm going to get a ton of science for it. All right. So uh, our current contracts are the atmospheric measurement. And we have, I think, two sounding rockets. Yes, um, 3,100 kilometers. And... 340 kilometers. So yeah, that that one's going to be really easy, and this one's going to be a little tougher, but not too bad. Uh, this one is really interesting. What you would notice about this contract is that uh, you need a periapse that's pretty exact, and an apoapse that's not. It just has to be above a certain level, and this is actually hinting at how we should go about doing this. So what we're supposed to be doing is um, actually getting, launching to the periapse altitude that we want and then just boosting up as high as we can to pass this uh, apoapse altitude. This way we can actually do it with just single controlled burns since every one of our engines can only be ignited once. So we need to be very careful about how we do it and I'm going to show you how? I've already simulated it, so it really should not be a problem to do. Let's roll out. And we've got daylight, so we're good. So this is the Scotsman 2 um, orbiting, uh, orbiter rocket. So that's what we're going to do now. So this is our next rocket. It's very much like the orbiter one, the Scotsman one, the orbiter. Uh, it's got two huge boosters. It actually has an improved upper stage too. We'll see that in a little bit. This is going to give me all the power that I need to get up to 300, uh, 3,000 3, kilometers. That's what we need for our high sounding rocket. So let's just get rid of this message and three, two, one, ignite. Blast off. Nice. So remember, our engines need a little bit of time to throttle up. This is why we have to wait and stage a little differently than what you're probably used to. What's interesting, something I tried to do in the simulation, and then I quickly realized that was not going to happen. Uh, I tried to throttle the engines down. Now, part of realism overhaul is that you can't throttle the engines mid-flight. Like, that doesn't work. They have a... M most of them, anyway, the early ones especially. Um, they have a certain uh, thrust that they work at, and that's it. So I tried to do it beforehand using the thrust limiter up here, and it didn't do anything. And then I realized that makes sense. These are engines that are supposed to operate at a certain performance. They're supposed to be do to, to do something very specific, 
and that's what they do so this is what you get so if you have engines that are actually too powerful for you you're gonna have to do something about it uh, in my case I actually made the boosters bigger than I wanted to that made them heavier I got extra delta V out of it obviously so that was also pretty good but uh, what really happened is that it also made this rocket extremely stable so I got two for one and while I've been rambling all this time we've launched our rocket and we have our target altitude the periapse altitude and now we just need to finish our orbit and then boost up so we're almost there and we are in orbit perfect and now all we gotta do is just push our apoapse up 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 above the line that we need alright that's one and a half thousand kilometers two thousand kilometers we need three ten two and a half three three ten all right three three point one so we're good uh, we're up above four thousand kilometers can we get five are we gonna get five five thousand kilometers perfect five seventy seven let's push this up just a tiny bit more boom all right so this is our second probe and yeah so we got the atmospheric analysis which was if you recall oh, wait is it still here no okay so I needed the periaps to be between something like 260 kilometers and 600 kilometers and the epoaps above uh, around 3000 so this is what we did this is what we got and for the next one we have a sounding rocket mission for 340 kilometers so let's do that okay this is it and after that we have another sounding rocket for where is it there it is uh, 3100 kilometers so let's do that and we got it oh yeah we also got a whole bunch of uncrewed records 1000 kilometers 900 kilometers 800 kilometers great let's get rid of all these perfect and thanks to my new strategy I even got a little bit more science so that's all this probe is going to be doing this is the orbit for Scotsman 2 probe and yeah I guess that's it awesome okay so I think this is a great place for us to stop uh, we've done some pretty neat things and we're taking this a step further in the next episode we are going to the moon that's a little bit of a spoiler also huge huge graphical updates coming in the next episode so stay tuned for that uh, hopefully it'll come next week and I'm just gonna leave you with this little tiny feature in realism overhaul called range safety so check this out and I'll catch you in the next one <laughs>